Hello, Brett. Brett Gaylor, thank you so much for being uh, live with us uh, on the UX series. Um, today, really, what we want to discuss about is this whole issue of purpose. The idea being that a lot of interactive documentary might start with a great idea, might have a great story, um, but that there is a difference between story and purpose, so between what you want to say and the effect you, you want to have on your user. Shall we start by just presenting yourself? Do you want to present yourself and then we'll, we'll you know, continue the discussion? Sure. Uh, thanks, Andrea. Uh, my name is Brett Gaylor and I work at Mozilla where um, my job is uh, the Senior Director of Products for our Webmaker group. Uh, I'm also a documentary filmmaker um, as well. So you did one of the first documentary, which wasn't truly interactive, but that was using a lot of the web, etc., with uh, um, you know rip, a remix manifesto, where effectively you were asking people to be part of the production, give your idea, remix your your edits. When you did that, what was the purpose of your project? Did you have a clear idea of the difference between the story and the purpose? Sure. So um, we did have a, a clear purpose for what we wanted the website that accompanied the film to do. So we made a site called opensourcecinema.org, and the purpose of that was to encourage people to upload the um, material to our film in progress. And uh, so this was, you know, the, the the film took many years to complete. So. At the time, we were actually asking people to do a uh, to do something online that was not very familiar to them, which was to upload their own content. So this is before YouTube or anything like that. And so uh, we were asking people to not only upload their content, but to also uh, remix our film as it was in progress. So we would um, sort of uh, submit calls to action to, for our audience. So for instance, if we had completed a scene, we would ask people to remix it and then send their results in, and then uh, we would incorporate those into the final film. Um, if I was to take a time machine back, I certainly would have d done a lot of those things differently um, with this specific um, sort of criteria in mind that we're talking about right now, which is, um, you know, Richard called it purpose, and, uh, you know, I would say more along the lines of what do you want the user to do? Um, and I think that that's often a struggle for people that come from a documentary background is to really put themselves into that, you know, user experience. We're in the UX series, so, like, what is it that you want that per person to experience or do um, with your project? So, but even there, I think, um, you know, when we speak about interactivity, as producer, we start thinking, okay, what can the user do? And yet, um, from what Richard was saying, and I think that's interesting in his, uh, you know, in his interview, for him, purpose is not what you do, but you, the shift that you achieve by doing that thing. So it's not really, you know, what shall I ask, which are the options I'm going to give to my user, but more, where do I want the user to be, or where do I assume the user is emotionally at the beginning of this experience, and where do I want this user to be by the end of it? Do, do we know how to do this when we do interactive documentaries? So I agree with part of what he's was he saying in there, but my sort of tweak on that. Um, so when I'm not working on documentaries um, and, and what we do at Mozilla, every day we're trying to get better at this concept of what is the job to be done? And, and this is sort of a, a theory of product management that you can find online. And, you know, so let's take, for example, somebody that, you know, is looking to uh, buy a book on Amazon, right? So on Amazon, they put all of their design thinking and their sort of product management acumen into that question of like how do I help what does this person need to do on this page and is this page's uh, design optimized for that 
product. And, um, you know, they'll run tests, they'll do everything they can to what's called funnel somebody along a path. So they show up at this website, and then at the end of this funnel, what we want them to have done is buy the book or, or buy the shoes, right? And I think that what, what documentarians often struggle with is if I was to put a gun to your head and say, like, what is the thing that, that person has to do at the end of that funnel? It's a little fuzzy, right? Because they might say, well, I would want, you know, I would want there to be less starving people in the world, or I would, you know, you know, I I'd like them to know about this incredible uh, emotional journey that my character had, and that's hard. So I agree with Richard in that what you, what I think that when we get into interactive documentary. The job of a page is to, um, uh, you know, is to affect a change in somebody's understanding, right? And so, when, through that frame, you actually see how early in in the sort of process of figuring out the best interactive approaches we are in, in documentary film, because it isn't always the case that. Um, you know, watching a five-minute video is the best way to do that, or it isn't always the case that, um, you know, choosing a different uh, reordering of linear stories is the best way to affect that change. So um, I agree with Richard in that in that respect. Um, I think that, you know, when you are embarking as a director of an interactive pro project it's interesting to ask yourselves the same sort of questions that anyone would have to answer um, were they building another type of, of product on on the web. And I think that uh, oftentimes, you know, when a creative person is, is asked to make something in a new medium, they'll sort of look at um, what are all the what are all the things that have been done in this medium before they like, and how could I match my content to that form? And so you get a lot of people saying, oh, like, well, a user will be able to, um, you know, a, a user will be able to select things on a map that uh, one of the characters in our story has done, or a user will be able to um, enter a... Uh, hashtag search and see all the photos that other people have submitted. But, in this but you see, it's, it's interesting because you automatically go back into what can the user do. Now, I'm not convinced that this is what Richard had in mind. He, he takes the example, for example, of um, uh, Africa or um, starvation, or I, I can't remember. Let, let's say the problem of food supply, you know, in certain areas of the world. Now, the automatic storytelling uh, default is to tell the story. This is what is happening. I'm going to show you what happens in certain areas of the world. Um, the idea of adding interactivity would tend to be, okay, what can I ask the user to do in order to discover my story? Mm. Now, what Richard is saying is that even that is not effective. Because what is effective is not to tell, but to put the user in a way that actually this becomes a self-discovery and a shift, an emotional shift. So it's more about, instead of telling you the story, it's about saying, what if you only had you know, a limited amount of water to live through your day? Mm -hmm. Would you be more careful about how you take a shower or wash your dishes today? So it's about positioning. Um, and the purpose is that shift that the person will say, ah, it's true, I never realized, you know, now it concerns me. Yeah, so, so I agree with him in that respect, and I think that, you know, I think this came up in one of the um, manifesto sessions that we did at WASFest a couple of years ago together, it was this notion that, you know, it, it's helpful for documentarians to think of, like, the, the interface is to what an interactive creator, what uh, montage is to the traditional documentarian, because that is the way that you have of of juxtaposing or putting, um, you know, that 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 is your tool to affect that emotion in in your audience is is d those different interactive modes. So there doesn't have to be one, you know. Like I think you you need to pick the best mode for 
the what you're trying to do. So yes, if it is if it's about water, you might want to have people consider what their water consumption is. And it's not always best to tell it it just a straight up story is not always the best way to accomplish that. I agree. And have you work out your own strategies to make sure that you keep on track of what you're trying to say or, or the purpose and the shift you want the users to have in your own productions? Um, it's, uh, one that I I like um, there there was a, a this friend um, Hieronimo ha came up with was you know oftentimes you'll as a interactive producer you'll you'll you you find yourself saying a user can so a user can compare their own water consumption to that of somebody in Africa for instance. It's an interesting check on that to say a user must uh, compare their own water consumption with somebody in Africa to then say, oh, would would anybody actually want to do that? <laughs> it's not actually a enjoyable or worthwhile thing to be doing looking at a computer. And it's astonishing how often the answer to that question is, no, I don't want to do that. I, I have no interest in my busy online life of dragging a couple of dials around or doing it, you know, so I, I think it's an interesting check. The best interactive experiences tend to be those that are very simple and, you know, grokkable or understandable right away. Like you take Vine. Vine, like how do yeah. you make a tap on the screen three times and it makes, uh, you know, it makes a loop of your experience. That's fun. It's interesting to do and just people make it so difficult <laughs> on themselves, you know. <laughs> And, and this idea that you should be able to formulate within one sentence the purpose of your project, is that something you've done yourself? No, I'm terrible at that. I mean, I, I think, yes, I think that is a worthwhile goal, but it's also similar to saying, like, you know, uh, your painting should inspire awe and beauty um, in everyone that looks at it. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a worthwhile ideal, but I think for those of us that sort of, you know, work in... in it, it, yes, you, you should be able to do it. Um, it it's, it's something to strive for. I think it's also worth remembering like sometimes that the best experiences are complex and they are rich and, and there, there, there are a lot of grays in, in areas that documentary producers um, wish to pursue. But yes, I think you're, I think what he's trying to say is less is more in an interactive experience and you know, you should force yourself as a producer to, um, you know, clean your plate before coming back for seconds in your approach. You know, like, is your core, um, is your core value proposition, to use a buzzword, like what you're offering to that user to do, is it clear and precise? You know, again, back to Vine. It makes looping videos by touching the screen three times. Boom. Google. And this idea that what is in there for me, so Vine is probably fun, um, yes. but when you're trying to do a whole story, you want more than fun, I suspect. Yeah, but you got caught there and you said you're trying to tell a whole story, so what Richard said is, you're, it, like, are you trying, you're trying to give a user an experience. Like, you know, I remember when we had Rip in the theaters, we would stand outside and we would ask people to go in, you know? You have like four, you have five seconds with some. You know, like the average bounce rate on a website is like seventy-five percent. Like most people leave in the first like three seconds. They go to that site. What the f is this? And, then, and and if they don't like it, they're gone. You know, like if if you're staring at your Google Analytics. So it does have to pass that like I as the user give a shit test. Like this is something I'm willing to spend more three minutes or more with, which is an eternity on the web. So. Yes, you, you do need to have that very concrete offering to somebody that they're gonna that they're gonna pass it on to a friend. Hey, you gotta check out this thing. It makes looping videos. You touch the screen three times. Hey, you gotta check out this web documentary. You enter the home in which you grew up, and it builds a music video out of your life. Hey, you gotta check out this water thing because it's really wild. It records every time you use water and then compares that with, you know, water usage in the third world. 
hey, you got to check out this kind of complicated story of a coal miner, and it sort of compares his life with his dad's, and it, it sort of uses your own photos, and I kind of forget. Like, nobody's going to do that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it does have to so, be a bit more so concise. Keep it simple. Um, keep the pitch, you know, condensed so that the user knows what they're getting out of it. And hopefully stick to it as well, I suspect. Absolutely. Well, I think we promised to be extremely short, a maximum of 15 minutes on the Hangout, so I'm going to stop it there. But um, thank you so much, Brett, for your input into the UX series. Thanks, Sandra.